Okay, great. All right then. Um, so yeah, uh, so my name is David. I'm going to be giving this little brief um, tour of the Foursquare API. Um, and so I'm based out in our uh, New York City offices headquarters um, over here in the U.S. And so it's bright and early here, but I hope you guys enjoy this little uh, session that I'm going to give. So basically, I'm going to give a brief overview of uh, what the API can do, uh, how to actually use it, and then give some examples and maybe some ideas for what you guys can work on towards the end. And then um, if you want, um, I can give like a little live coding at the end, but we'll see uh, what all the audience wants. And then um, I'm hoping to open up the ground for a lot of um, Q&A uh, towards the end of the session. Um, so it seemed like a lot of, like not many of you guys knew what Foursquare actually was. Um, so maybe we can spend like just some of that Q&A time just kind of going over uh, the actual application itself. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started now. Um, yeah, so here's actually a pretty good overview of uh, what Foursquare actually is. Um, so our kind of like mission, our tagline is to help people make the most out of where they are. Um, it's an app that helps you explore your city and kind of connect with the people and things that are around you, right? So you can use this to discover new places, uh, kind of like see where your friends are and like figure out just like what's good in, in like, you know, the area that you're in. Um, so that's kind of what a lot of people like, kind of like like the consumer population thinks of what Foursquare is. But what, like as developers, we kind of tend to think of Foursquare as you know it's data. Um, we have over 40 million registered users on Foursquare. Uh, they have given us a combined uh, over 4.5 billion check-ins to various places. Um, and then our venues database is um, over 55, uh, has over 55 million places um, throughout the world. And so uh, we actually have, so part of how, uh, part of what is unique about Foursquare is how these places and these venues are kind of curated and managed, right? So we actually have our check-in data and like our use data kind of um, in like a crowdsource way fueling uh, the like the places database that we that we use in Foursquare. And so uh, it, it's a really well like kind of like curated database of, uh, of venues throughout the world. And so the number here that gets me most excited though is this last one, which is the fact that we have over 50,000 developers um, using our API. And so let's just kind of dig in and uh, take a look at what this data actually means, right? So here we have a graph uh, that shows the temperature throughout a year versus the number of versus the number of uh, check-ins that happen at an, at um, ice cream venues in New York City, right? So you can kind of see this general overall trend that as the, as like the year wears on and the months get warmer, more people start checking into ice cream places, um, which I think is pretty cool. However, if you what, what I think is most fascinating here is that if you take a look at this little kind of like bump here in early January, um, you can kind of see that even though there was a small jump in temperature, there was a similar small jump in the number of check-ins to ice cream venues. So like. I think that this just kind of shows off the power of um, of our data and like how you can kind of, can like kind of like glean insights from it. Um, this was another project that we worked with um, that we worked with the city of Tampa with. So this is a this is a kind of heat map of check-ins throughout the city of Tampa, uh, basically throughout one day. So it's like so it's like 9 a.m. right now. People are probably checking into like coffee places offices, um, as the day wears on, they go into more like kind of cafes, restaurants, you know, places for, for lunch and stuff. Um, and so what I want you to pay attention to though, is as the day wears on, you see as it goes later on towards the night, there's this kind of large concentration of check-ins in kind of like this, like the Northeast region of the city, right? And then so it's like 11 o'clock and a lot of people are checking in over there. And then so you wonder, um, you know, like where do people go late at night? And then you think, well, like um, they go to kind of like bars and pubs and kind of like nightlife places, right? And then so my guess is that that 
you know, region of Tampa has a lot of uh, bars and clubs. And then so I'm just going to kind of quickly verify my assumption here. Like, I know nothing about the city of Tampa, right? But if I look it up on the map, um, you can kind of see that this was the region that we were looking at, right? There's this kind of like river thing down here. There's this um, little stream here as well. And then so we saw a lot of a lot of check-in activity happen around here for like kind of like bars and nightclubs, right? And so if we just want to search uh, for bars, we can see that, yeah, most of the bars, or like there's a huge concentration of bars in in uh, Tampa in this region. So even though I knew nothing about the city of Tampa, uh, through Foursquare's data and Foursquare's information, I was able to reasonably deduce that um, there was, you know, like a lot of bars in one region of the city. So that's the other kind of insights that we can provide. Um, we can also provide personal insights. Um, so you can connect with, with Foursquare user accounts and kind of see a personal history of where they've been. This is a sleek visualization that we produced um, a couple of months ago that basically shows all of my activity uh, on Foursquare. So here you can see me going to Massachusetts. I'm going to Boston here. And then you can see um, just kind of where I was and like what I did in the city of Boston like during this trip and see me like going back to New York now. And then uh, this is just kind of a sleek way to kind of show uh, my activity throughout the city. And then so you can see most of my activity is like down here by work and up there uh, by Columbia where I went to school. And then so this is just kind of uh, a way to show off like the power of our like personal history on, on Foursquare. Um, so you think like, oh, that's awesome. Like, how do I do that? Well, um, you do that through uh, the Foursquare API which I'm going to talk a little bit more about now. Um, so the basic question that everyone asks is, you know, what can the API do? And the API does basically anything that our mobile apps can do, right? And so this basically amounts to three things when it comes to developers. Uh, one, it can search for places around you. Two, you can interact with Foursquare users through the API. And then finally, you can be notified uh, when somebody checks in. Like basically, we'll send your servers or ping and then you'll be able to do something with that. Um, so by far the number one use case for Foursquare is using our reverse geocoder, where you give us a latitude and longitude, and then we'll be able to tell you, you know, what is near this area. And then so I like to think of the API as um, you giving us a lat long, and then we telling you what's interesting, what's good to see, you know, just like what's going on around this lat long, right? So we'll show you venues, um, we'll show you kind of like tips in the area, um, we'll show you who's at these venues right now, right? So for example, if you pass us this lat long longitude, we will tell you that this is the place for Moscone West in San Francisco, and then you know, you're know you going to see all the kind of activity that's around Moscone West. And then so in addition to being able to see like basic info, like the name, address, and phone number, um, you'll be able to see tips that our user base, our, that our users have left there. Um, you'll be able to see like how many people have like checked in there in total. You'll see photos of the place, and then and you can even see uh, who's currently there right now. And then so these are just an example of some apps that that you may have heard of or seen um, that use this feature. And then so these are some apps. There's some other apps. There's more apps. So so. The point is that a lot of apps use this um, this service that we provide. Um, the second main thing that you can do with the API is interact with Foursquare users. So you can see somebody's check-in history, and that's what, what I was kind of visualizing before with um, that kind of like uh, time machine app that we built. Um, and then so you can also s perform actions on behalf of user right? So you can check somebody in, you can post photos at somebody's, and then you can get personalized search results. So if you connect with Foursquare users, uh, the search results I was talking about before actually become personalized, right? So when you pass in a lat long, um, we'll, we'll be able to tell you, like, um, not, um, not only what's around you, but kind of like relevant social signals to you, right? Like, which one of your friends have been in this place before? You know, which one of your friends have left tips here? You know, things along those lines. And then if we know that you like, say, um, 
like kind of like more classier restaurants. Uh, we will bubble those up over like fast food chains because we are able to personalize and tailor these search results for you. Uh, and then again, so the third biggest thing that the API can do is be notified when people check in, right? So if you connect users with your application, whenever one of your users checks in, your your um, basically Foursquare will send your server a ping, and then you'll be able to react to this check, right? Like you'll see where this person checked in, when it was, who it was, stuff like that. And then so um, there have been a lot of interesting apps built on this idea of this kind of like real time notification of when other people uh, check in into places. So they like, great, that's an awesome API. How do I use it? Um, thanks for asking, Oprah. Um, so step one you have to do is you have to create an app. Uh, after kind of step zero is just going to developer.forthcare.com and kind of reading through our documentation. Um, but there's a button there that says my apps, and then there's a large green button that says create an app, and so you hit that to create an application. Um, secondly, you have to learn kind of our our endpoints, right? So we are completely RESTful. So this means that all you need to be able to do is make HTTP requests, and then you should be able to to um, interact with our API. Um, we do have client libraries um, that you can look at, but these are maintained by our community, uh, and then we don't release any official SDKs or APIs. So our API is 100% RESTful. Um, and so what this boils down to is, you know, there there's an endpoint for each action, right? So if you want to search for something, that's that's the venue search endpoint. If you want to figure out who's there now, that's the venues here now. If you want to look at, at the menu of a place, you can go to venue slash menu, right? So these are kind of how our endpoints are structured and how they work. Uh, here are some interesting endpoints that I kind of want to just like demonstrate and go over. Uh, let me hop over here. So yeah, so this is uh, the Foursquare API documentation. Again, you go to My Apps here, and then the, 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 there's a large green button you use to create an application, and then just kind of fill out basic information, and then you'll get a client um, ID and a client secret to, to use with your app. And then so there are some endpoints when the show off. So if you go to the endpoints kind of link up here, you can see the list of our entire um, selection of endpoints available. Uh, so venues here now, something that I want to show off. Um, so this is showing a, uh, it's, it's actually a bakery that's not open right now. Uh, so that's why you, so that's why you see this kind of here now count uh, being zero down here. But let me find where there should be some place. Uh, it's a London Airport. So we're going to Heathrow, right? Uh, you take this ID, you kind of slap it in here, and then you see now here that there are 85 people currently checked into London Heathrow. Um, and so this is kind of like what the Here Now endpoint does. You, you can do this with um, with basically every single venue that we've had, and so you can learn a lot of interesting patterns about how people kind of um, behave this way. Um, so next venues is is something uh, that tells you is something that tells you where people often check into after a certain venue. So I pulled up that uh, like kind of like bakery again, right? So people go to a deli after this bakery. Um, you can see that the, the people go to this um, gelato place after they check into this bakery, which, which kind of makes sense, right? Like after you had a meal, you kind of want some ice cream, and then so they check into this um, gelato place that, that's nearby um, this original venue. And then finally, users check-ins. Um, uh, yeah, so let's go back to our API endpoints, and then go to users slash check-ins, and then hit this green try it out button down here. Um, yeah, so it's users self check-ins, yeah. And then so this shows my personal history on Foursquare. So it says here I was at Foursquare HQ. Before that, I was um, I was at a place called Lou's Baguette in New York. I was um, let's see, 
I was with a friend called Cecilia there, you know, so this tells me this, like, a lot of rich information about my personal history on Fourth Street. I can see that it was, it was a Viennese um, restaurant that I went to, so. The kind of point here is, like, there's a, there's a very rich amount of information that that's available through the API, and the best way to explore that is kind of just, like, through these endpoints and through that try it out button. Um, so again, we are RESTful, and then all of our responses come back in JSON format. We call the API, right? So there are basically two calling patterns with the API. One is authenticated requests, and two is useless requests, right? So uh, you need to make authenticated requests if you want any sort of like personal data, right? So if you want to figure out um, information about a user, you have to authenticate the user through OAuth, um, and then you'll be able to have this person's OAuth token, which uh, will allow you to kind of like see personalized information about this person. Uh, second one is useless requests, where basically you're not going to see any personalized information, and you're not going to be actually um, interacting with any users, but you'll be able to see like basic venue information, like do basic searches, you know, stuff like that. Like usually it sounds like what it is, right? Like you, like you don't want to um, associate this with any user. Uh, no one knows what step four is, but step five definitely is is the profit. Um, so I, I have a few fully working samples on my GitHub account, right? And so just go to GitHub.com/octopi, and then so here is an application that uh, is on there. So this, what this thing does is, is it's very basic, and then uh, it tells you whether or not you need a haircut based on my last check-in to a hair salon, right? So first thing I do is I connect to Foursquare. Um, oh, the application seems to be down right now, awkwardly. Uh, oh, that's right. So, sorry, I, I haven't updated this API to uh, uh, to our recent standards yet. I created that a while ago, but I can update that later if you want to see me do a live demo of um, of how that works. But anyway, uh, some old code is there. I will push a fix to it right after this thing. Um, so you can see more examples on my GitHub account there. Um, we left a few .NET visualizers that's available to you. Um, so if we go to our our documentation, there is a thing on the left that says libraries, and then so we have libraries in like any single language that that you can imagine. But we do have two .NET libraries here that may be of interest to you. Um, and these are community owned and managed, which means you can like make changes to them and do on They're totally um, open source. And so to just go to that libraries page, you want to find out more um, about how to use those. Um, so I want to go over now some kind of like previous success stories, uh, what, what, what kind of like API integrations that we've seen out of events like these, these things that we like in general, right? Um, so this was a cool mobile app that, uh, that somebody made that is it's called Pizza Compass. And then basically, um, this kind of pizza in the middle here uh, rotates as you turn your phone around uh, in different directions, and this basically just points to the nearest pizza place, right? Um, so you can see when I took the screenshot, there was a pizzeria uh, kind of like facing this way, um, four, uh, 0 0.4 miles away. And then so when you tap through to this, you see our venue pages, and then you see all this rich information about a venue, right? You see where it is, you see, you know, that it's open till 11.45, you can even call them um, through your phone if you want. Uh, day Tripper is a web application that somebody made that kind of plans out your day in the city for you using our venue's information, right? So you see here that it recommends going to a bakery in the morning, you, uh, you like go to a park, uh, you kind of like explore the East Village in the afternoon, you do dinner at some American restaurant, and then you go to a bar at night, right? So this plans for you a very kind of like neat trip through like lower lower uh, Manhattan here in New York City. And this all um, uses our venue data. Um, Jim Shimer is an application that someone built at our last hackathon where um, if you don't check into a gym and say more – than a week, it goes to all your social networks like Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. Um, 
and it's and it posts for you like, hey, like I haven't been to a gym in more than a week. Like I'm a very bad person. Uh, that's kind of what it does. Uh, don't eat that. It's kind of like a classic force for application that someone built this thing years ago. Uh, basically, um, if you check into a place that has that has a high amount of health code violations, this application sends you a text uh, saying like, hey, you just check into a place with health code violations, uh, you know, don't eat here. Uh, fourth grand seven years ago was something that was created at our first hackathon, um, and this basically tells you, this basically sends you an email about where you were one year ago on that day, where you check into. Um, and so you may know it better now, as an application called TimeHop, uh, which is actually like, this is actually a real company uh, that got spun off based off a, basically that um, that started at a Foursquare hack. And so I made a replica version of this called TinyHop that you can see uh, on my GitHub page. And then so, he, and so here's some ideas about uh, what you can possibly build and kind of like leverage uh, your platform for, right? So. I think it's always a great idea to kind of like build these like personal rich visualizations of like where you've been, right? There's just like wealth of information about like kind of where you've been and then it's always fun to see it kind of like visualized in like a fun and unique way. Um, I always been kind of like interested in these kind of like quick tip ideas, like um, like the great part about being bought on a mobile phone is that like you, you can really like just like jot something down, uh, like write it really easily, right? So you can do something like, um, you know, like basically, like all the application does is allow you to kind of like write tips for for venues that are like nearby, right? That would be very um, useful for like being able to, to leave like kind of like quick things uh, about what's around you. Like I think that the compass idea is like pretty cool for like a mobile platform as well. Um, you know, there's a pizza compass for iPhones, so it's like kind of why not make it for like you know Windows Phone devices? Um, and then in general, like I'm not too familiar with. Uh, the Windows Phone platform, but like I know that there are definitely unique ways that you can leverage that with our data, right? So like um, live tiles is a great example, right? So like suppose you build this application that basically just shows you uh, the nearest tip in like a live tile or something like that, or, or just like photos of like nearby venues that changes throughout the day, right? So, so suppose um, you can like build an application that kind of like shows you photos of breakfast places in the morning, shows you pictures of lunch places in the afternoon and then towards the night, it shows you like photos and stuff of like bars and stuff. Like that'll be an awesome kind of like live time duration, I think. Um, and then last point here is, you know, it's not as sexy, but like still pretty useful. Uh, as you saw, we only have two .NET libraries um, available right now for our community. You know, it's not as sexy, but like definitely like creating more libraries uh, for the community is something that we always love seeing. And so if you create one of these and send me an email, I'll definitely put your .NET um, library on a developer site so, so that more like Windows Phone developers out there can use it and can kind of like leverage um, what you guys have created. And then, so that's basically it. Uh, my name is David. My email is dh at .com. And you can feel free to reach to me directly. And then again, uh, the website is just developer.forsker.com. And then you should be able to find most of the information that you're um, looking for on that thing. So that's uh, kind of all I have right now. So I kind of want to see if I can open up the floor for any questions or, or, or anything. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Um, so are, are there any questions about like the API, um, Foursquare in general? Like I'm not sure how wide adoption of the actual application is over there so I can like just talk about that briefly as well just like tell me tell me um, what you guys want and like you know my time is your time all right we we'll, we'll take a couple of minutes, couple of questions or something and then um, we can we can send you other questions this way if any sure um, questions. I, I can um, I couldn't quite hear that because of the echo.
Hello. Can you guys still hear me? I couldn't hear what uh, what that person asked because of the echo. Hi David, Hi, uh, this is Ahmed Gaffer from Microsoft. We have a question hey, from Al Shafi and uh, and uh, the I am Bob. Do you have mm -hmm. figures on the size of chickens in here? Um, yeah, we can get a pretty good sense of that actually, right? Um, so if we go to endpoints, and then um, we just do a basic kind of like venue search. And then it's really easy to like find out. Uh, uh, sorry, I have to use. I've, that was my employee account, which I can't use. Um, so, 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 so just go to endpoints here, and then I go to uh, venue search, and then you can search for venues around you. So you said you wanted to uh, just kind of like get a sense of check-ins in in Egypt, right? So we can uh, pass in this near parameter. That's near, um, so let's say Cairo, Egypt. And then so you, uh, you see these kind of like venues pop up here. I, I'm not going to just take this and put it in here so it's easier for you guys to look at. Um, so, um, so again, just to reiterate, we're like 100% robust one. So I just plug this thing into a browser, and then you, and then you can see this um, JSON response here. So. Here we go. So near Cairo, Egypt, right? So there's this um, train station, you know, over like 7,000 people have been there before. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Um, there's this hotel casino. Um, 15 people have been to that one. Um, let's see, there is a neighborhood called Mamasa. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, check in stats are a little bit lower here. Um, and none of those are translation. Nine people <laughs> like have been here. Uh, perhaps a better endpoint to use here is uh, the Explore endpoint, which tells you uh, popular venues and recommended places, right? So Explore is a little bit different than Search, right? So for Search, it's like, so we think of the searching as like, tell us the nearest places around me, right? Like, where is the nearest coffee shop in the area, right? Um, whereas we think of Explore being more like, uh, what is the best in the area, right? What is the best coffee shop in the area? So we take um, from location a little bit more liberally here, and then these, these two things kind of uh, answer different types of questions. So if we just take the Explore API, and then we plug this guy in again here. And then so there's a bunch of metadata that, that we return here, right? So here are recommended places. And then here are some reasons why this place is recommended. Um, but let's see if we can actually find out. So the venue here, oops, I gotta, sorry, do Cairo Egypt again. So near equals Cairo Egypt. Um, so again, so actually, so here's, so, so one of my friends has actually been to this venue before, right? And then so through the API, you were able to figure that out. I had no idea that uh, Jafwa has been to uh, the Egyptian museum before, but you know, through Foursquare, I'm, I can learn that now, right? And, and so this museum in general uh, has had over 1,700 check-ins, you know, it's open till 6 p.m., a lot of great information here, you know? And then so this is a great tip that like somebody has left about this venue before, 25 people like this tip, stuff like that. Um, so let's see the next item. Uh, Tahir Square is uh, is another one. Uh, over 14,000 people have been here before. Um, let's see, this place is called Zabalek. Uh, is, is also pretty popular. Uh, it looks like it's a neighborhood. It's over 13,000 people. So yeah, like this is just kind of a an idea of uh, the kind of like venue data that we have in Egypt. Okay, David. So, so, so the other question is about the page range. Uh -huh. So when you when you when you retrieve um, a, a large uh, amount of data, is, is is it possible to get it in pages? Um, so the only thing we kind of support paging for is. Um, like use so is is users history right um, 
you, you, you can have like thousands of check-ins um, and you have to kind of page through that through different API calls. Um, we don't support that for venue search just because it's really hard to um, to kind of like go through all the venues in a region, right? And like when you say all the venues, it's, it's also a really um, like once you go more than like three to four pages in, you're really not looking at like high quality venues and like you're really not looking at places that you probably want to be working with, right? Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of like a Google search result, right? Like once you're past like even two to three pages, um, you, the, um, the results kind of aren't what you're looking for. And then if you can't find what you're looking for, the best way to kind of mitigate that is to actually change your search query or to um, kind of change the bounding box of your latitude and longitude. Um, so yeah. The maximum number of results that each search can support is 50. Okay, same thing. <laughs> So yeah, um, are there any other questions about the API or like Foursquare itself, like something else that that can help out with? So can you hear me? Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I, I have a question concerning the limitations on the number of requests per day. So are there some sort of limitations on the number of requests per second or per day? Yeah, exactly. So we have a rate limit of 5,000 requests per hour um, when you're making user list requests. Um, for authenticated requests, um, we have a rate limit of 500 per user per hour. So we're a little bit more lenient about um, authenticated requests. Um, but yeah, so basically each application can make uh, 5,000 requests per hour. And then um, if you want a rate limit increase, you just have to um, reach out to me and then we, we can chat a bit up. We, we can chat a bit about your application and then um, we can see if it makes sense to give you guys a rate limit increase. And then again, that information is is available here on the side under rate limits. So 5,000 user lists and then 500 for. Okay, so there is, there is a question about the caching. Okay. You allow caching or not? Uh, yeah, so our policies state that you can cache information for up to 30 days before you refresh it. Um, so basically, like, the way that we like to, like to, to think about it is that, um, like you first you first you always check check your cache your cache right and then if it's not in your cache then you make the API a, a, a request but if it's in your cache check to see if it's more than than thirty days old if yes you go to the API and then you refresh your cache and then just keep using your cache then for up to thirty days um, we require you to cache uh, venue details not venue search. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, is that it for questions? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, there is a question about the difference between authenticated and user uh, uh, tokens and, and whether, what, are, what is the, the core difference between both of them? Right. So in terms of response, the core difference is that if you do a user, if you do a userless search or, or, or a useless request, you're just going to get back generic information, right? Like Userless requests are not tied to any user. So you were able to see in this request here uh, 
this is actually an authenticator request, but you're able to see that, you know, social information like my friend Jeff Wah has been in this place before, right? And then so this is because this request was made through an OAuth token, not um, – not not a uh, not a client ID client secret. So in terms of the mechanics, the main difference is that for a use for an authenticated uh, request, you pass in it an OAuth token. But for a user list request, you you pass in a client ID and client secret. So I can show you how to do that now. So if you go to my apps up here, um, these are all the applications I've created at some point. And so if you just plug it, so if you just take a client ID. And then uh, you get rid of this OAuth token here, and then you do client ID equals this thing, and then you pass in your client secret as well. Now, okay, so now the first venue here was the Egyptian Museum, right? And then you, you saw my friend Jeffwa has been there before. But if I do this request now, um, See how uh, the first result here has changed. It's no longer uh, the Egyptian museum because that social signal isn't there anymore. Right? And then so, uh, and then so now the Egyptian museum is fourth on my list. And then there is nothing in the reasons box because I didn't have that social personalized signal from Jeffwa. So like. Even though this was basically like the exact same search request, um, because the first one was authenticated and used and used an OAuth token, uh, that was able to give back like richer, uh, more personalized results. And then this is kind of spread throughout the API, right? Like any sort of API call that you make with an OAuth token, we try to uh, make that as personalized as possible. And then you cannot do things like see a user's history, see their check-ins, you know, see any kind of personalized information like that for security reasons, uh, unless you authenticate them. Okay. okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Um, so. so uh, uh, what, what, is, is there any question from, uh, from the audience here? All right, David. Um, I think we're done here from our side. Um, the other side on the, on the call, do you, do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, another question. Uh, uh, another question. Uh, it's, uh, it's about the source of the photos. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah. So uh, the source of the photos uh, is it uh, by crowdsourcing? So do uh, the users actually upload the photos, or you fetch them somewhere? So, can you hear me? David, do you do you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. So there is actually a problem with, uh, with, the connect with the connection from my side, so I, I cannot hear you quite well. The, the voice is breaking, but maybe someone can type it. Um, I, I, think, I think none of us is, can hear David. Okay. Hello? 
Is this better? Yes, yes, you yes now we can hear. Oh, okay, sorry. I, just, I got uh, muted somehow. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, photos. Um, can you guys see my screen still? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so for photos at a venue, you basically just pass in a venue ID here, um, and then you'll be able to see all the kind of like photos that our users have uploaded to the thing. So this is uh, the Foursquare venue for <coughs> uh, the Empire State Building, right? Um, and then so, let's see, if you go through our photo results here, um, you can see that this is one photo here, and then you need to put together a prefix and a suffix to see uh, the actual the actual photo. So so how photos work, and then you, you can read our documentation on this. Is that you, you need to put together a prefix plus a size plus a suffix, right? So so one example size is 500 by 500. So I have my prefix up here. I pass in 500 by 500, and then I put in the suffix. Uh, let's see, slash. Put in the suffix, and then here you can see a photo for the FRC photo that's 500 by 500. And then so um, you can use the API to retrieve photos uh, like this. And yes, these are all crowdsourced, and you can see the ID of the Foursquare user that created this, right? So that photo was created by someone called Darius. Um, the next photo is created by somebody called somebody called Christopher. So these are all Foursquare users that have uploaded public photos for these venues. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thanks, thanks a lot, David, for your time. Oh, yeah, you. Uh, I'm doing this kind of stuff, yeah. And so I'm always available at dh at foursquare.com uh, or just um, api at foursquare.com is also uh, goes to me as well. And then, again, on the site is just developer.foursquare.com. And then, yep, hope you guys enjoyed this session, and then feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks a lot, and we're, we're posting uh, a challenge in develop.com. Awesome. Our, uh, our developer community um, website for Windows Phone and, and for Nokia platform. Great. Um, I'll send you the contact uh, detail. It will run from now till the end of uh, Feb. Okay. Yeah, and hope we can get uh, some useful app, uh, apps to, to promote on both sides. Me too, yeah, that'd be awesome. That. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks so much, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay,